Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 45 with me Craig Barton. Well thank God the end of term is finally here and we have a bit of a tradition with this Resource of the Week and end of term maths activities of producing some absolute classics. Those of you who've been following this series for the last couple of years will remember that two years ago everyone was talking about the pirate game. And my kids still talk about that now. And indeed, my year 11s, uh, on their last ever maths lesson, all they wanted to do was to play the pirate game. So if you haven't seen that one, give that a little bit of a Google. It's a classic. And then there was the rival to the pirate game, the lobster game, which personally I think is even better. And again, goes down with an absolute uh, as an absolute storm with the kids. Well, what are we going to do for the end of term this year? Well, how about this? The Crystal Maze, uploaded by Dan Walker. Now, I was, I was hooked in straight away when I saw the title of this because I used to absolutely adore the Crystal Maze, especially when Richard O'Brien hosted it. Ed Tudor poll years went downhill a little bit, but still an absolute classic. But is was this resource just a, a good name and a bit of a lame resource? Well, I can happily say that it definitely isn't. It is absolutely wonderful. So let's take a look at it. It's a PowerPoint uploaded by Dan. And incidentally, Dan has uploaded some absolute classics over the last few years. Please check out his resources. Here it is, The Crystal Maze. There's your, there's your opening uh, title sequence just to, just to bring back those memories. Full instructions there about uh, getting the kids into teams of four. Um, what I love about this, absolutely brilliant. I was thinking, how is he going to split this up? Is it going to be number, algebra, data, shape? Nah, no need for anything like that. Gone for Greek, Egyptian, Indian, and Chinese. So straight away, the kids are getting a bit of a history of our uh, wonderful subject as well. So let's have a look at the old uh, the Greek zone here. Uh, kids can choose a physical, a skill, or a mystery challenge. Um, this one is the physical challenge, I believe, here. And they have to use straws and Play-Doh to make an icosahedron. It has 20 sides, so an absolutely brilliant way to, to kickstart this. Then let's have a look at the uh, the skill one. So the skill one uh, links in a bit of Euclid's uh, way of finding prime numbers. So a lovely little challenge there using the first eight uh, using the first eight primes. And then uh, for our mystery, let's work out the area of a triangle using a very interesting formula there that the, probably the kids haven't seen. Now just think. Doing those three things is some really high level challenging maths, but because of the way that this is structured, the kids have a real incentive to buy into it and give it a go because every time they get a crystal, and it's three crystals for the one who finishes first, two for the one who finishes second and so on, they get a five second head start on the final puzzle that gets revealed at the end. So there's your incentive for kids to buy into it. If you just have a flick through some of the other ones, uh, this is the Egyptian round. So uh, working out uh, the volume of a pyramid and then using the, the nets to, to find it. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Then we have some classic little Egyptian fractions to get the kids thinking about. And then we have uh, Egyptian way of representing numbers. So a couple of little puzzles there for the students. And all the, uh, all the answers are presented. They're all animated um, on the PowerPoint. Then we have um, Indian. That's absolutely brilliant little puzzle that for the kids to battle the way through. Just loads and loads and loads of stuff. Then we move on to the Chinese section. We've got some lovely tangrams. Uh, we have some uh, a lovely sharing uh, puzzle for the kids to get their head around. <laughs> and what about this? A lovely little maze for the kids to do as well. And it is just absolutely wonderful stuff. There's all your crystals, all your nets and stuff, all your materials you could ever want to have provided. And that maze presents the final challenge and that's where the kids can use all their crystals to buy themselves loads of time for that. It is, I mean, I literally can't wait to do this. Um, I think as you've seen from some of the challenges, it's quite high level stuff there. So maybe you're looking at either a very able year eight group or an able year nine, or perhaps we're, we're thinking more along the, the key stage four. Or even if you've got some year 12s who are still bombing around at this stage, have they ruled out trying this one? Possibly not. So there's something to uh, have, have a think about as well. So a wonderful end of term resource, the Crystal Maze. It certainly fits um, alongside the, the lobster game and the pirate game in my book. And yeah, that's it for our uh, resource of the, of the week feature uh, for this year. Um, all the resources of the week are stored um, on Tez, and I've also put them on my Mr. Barton Maths blog as well, so you've got loads of ways to access them. I'm going to take the uh, the summer holiday off, but um, hopefully, uh, if all goes to plan, I'll be back with a brand new series of Resource of the Week videos uh, for next year. So, take care of yourself, have a well-earned summer holiday, God, what a year this has been, 
and let's all hope that we are fresh and ready for another action-packed fun school year in September. Take care and bye for now.